What's going on guys? So today I want to talk about um, something a little different, uh, a little, well you guys will know by the title of this video obviously, so we'll just jump right into it I guess. We're going to talk about E85, E85, E98, uh, any ethanol um, fuel. What is E85 or E98? Well the E part of it stands for uh, ethanol or alcohol. Ethanol is alcohol made from Really, when you buy it at the at the gas pump, it's made from just about anything. They can make it from sugar, they can make it from corn, they can make it from wheat. There's there's many different ways to make it, um, but at the end of the day, it's an alcohol. And those are the three primary ones: is uh, sugar, corn, and uh, like a wheat or a grain product. So you have alcohol, and that's what the E part of it stands for. The 85 or 98 that part of it is how much there is in there so e98 would be 98 percent uh ethanol and two percent gasoline whereas e85 would be 90 or 85 percent ethanol and 15 percent gasoline a big misconception with ethanol is that it's some magic fuel and it solves all problems and you put it in your car and it's all great well that's not what it really is. Alcohol is a fuel that just so happens to have a higher octane and uh, this is where a lot of people get confused because um, your regular pump gas is here at, at our elevation they only give us up to 91. Other places have 93, um, you know some places have 95 I've heard uh, but we only get up to 91. We have 86 to 91 when you have a low or a high i guess you could say uh, God, i'm drawing a blank here low or high uh, octane rating when you have a low or high octane rating the low means under so much heat and pressure this fuel will just self-ignite just basically explode it doesn't take any ignition there's no spark or anything required it will literally just under this much pressure and heat and when i say pressure and heat i say that because when you compress something, it gets hot. Just like an air compressor, when it compresses air, it gets hot. When you release it, it gets cold. That's the same concept, uh, you know, that, like when you take a can of duster to dust, you know, your keyboard and you spray it and it gets cold. When you decompress something, it gets cold. That's exactly how an AC system works. But uh, we're not gonna get into that. We're just gonna stay on this. So when you compress something, you get something hot, like a piston compress coming up and compressing all that air, it starts to get hot. Well, when the engine's hot and you're making a lot of horsepower and you're at a high RPF and all this is happening really quickly, things tend to get really, really hot. And when things get hot like that, what can happen is if your fuel's not good enough because you spray the fuel in there and now the fuel's in the cylinder and the piston's coming up, boop, 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 compressing, well, that fuel just self-ignites before you, the spark plug, tell it to ignite. That's what detonation is or pre-ignition. Pre-ignition can be two ways. You can have the timing system, you know, or you can have your spark plug actually ignite it a little ahead of time. That's technically pre-ignition, but detonation is an uncontrolled explosion. That's what detonation is. And what that is, is your piston's trying to come up and compress this air, and it gets halfway up, and then the fuel's like too low of a quality or too low of an octane, and then it just self-ignites, and this explosion's going up or going off trying to shove, you know, Pressure's expanding, trying to shove the piston back down, but the piston's like, hey man, all the, the other crank and, and rods and pistons are saying, I gotta go up, and you're telling me to go down, and that's what happens. When that happens, then a lot of heat is put on right there, and that's where you know you start having actual metal failures and things like that, and rings, at that, at that point, your ring will get really hot, and what happens when the metal gets hot, it expands, so your ring will actually touch on a car that's had a lot of detonation or uh, pre-ignition, and it'll turn that, it'll touch those tips, turn it up, and break the piston. And then you have pieces floating around, blow by going everywhere, and that's a lot of times what a lot of guys see after they've uh, turned up the boost and they didn't get a tune for it, or you know things like that. You can uh, you can also have that you know by leaning it out too much is a, is the same effect. But getting back on the topic. E as itself as a whole, E98 is the most or highest ethanol content um, fuel you can get. They can't make it E100 and the reason they can't make it E100 is because E100 is technically alcohol. You could just go to your liquor store and buy it. Theoretically, you could go buy, uh, vodka is like a grain liquor. You could go buy uh, 100, what would it be? 200 proof, I think. If it was 100% uh, alcohol by volume, it would be 200 proof, I believe. 
Um, if they made, you know, 200 proof vodka or 100% alcohol by volume vodka, you could literally take that and that would be E100 basically. Um, but the reason they can't do that and they have to have 2% gasoline is so it's not alcohol. They can legally trans port it across borders and, and into different states. Otherwise, you know, there's lots of other um, things that go along with transporting alcohol. So that's why they put the 2% gasoline. It's literally there just to keep people from drinking it. That is the only, <laughs> straight up, that's the only reason why they even put the 2% of gasoline in the E98 is just to, to make it considered a fuel, not a drinkable liquor. So that's why they do it. But if you get 100% E, it's content or, or it's, uh, I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe it's around 120 is what E98's octane rating is. E98 has an octane rating of, I believe, 120. Don't quote me, but I believe it's 120. That's pretty good. 120 octane rating, that's really high. Especially when you look at like E98, or I mean E85. If you look at E85, E85 is probably about 100. It varies because when you go to the pump that says E85, it's usually E70 in the winter and it can get up to E. I've seen it E85 um, in the summer before. One of my first times I ever got E filled up with E, it was like E84 and that's the highest I've ever seen it ever since and it's been E72 to 75. So um, that's my luck. But at like an E72, its octane rating would probably still be around roughly 100 five to 108 e85 is supposed to be roughly around 108 and i would guess if you drop down to 70 you're probably getting into 104 105 uh, percent octane which that's still really high if you look at it compared to 91 because 91 is like 290 or 280 a gallon here whereas e98 is like a dollar 98 a gallon like that's just insane to me you can get 105 to 108 octane fuel for a dollar ninety-eight a gallon, or you can spend two ninety-eight a gallon or two fifty a gallon, depending on where you get it for ninety-one. And I'm like, that's that's kind of ridiculous, you know? That's, I mean, almost a no-brainer. The only downside of E is you have to spray at an eighty-five percent at E eighty-five, you have to spray thirty percent more. So, you know, you go up to E ninety-eight. Theoretically, you would spray thirteen percent more than what you're already spraying on top of E eighty-five. And by spraying, I mean what the injector is actually letting out into the cylinder. Um, and that's something that people have to take into consideration when they're doing things like, uh, you know, building a car that they want to make X amount of horsepower on E eighty-five or E ninety-eight. You got to really go, okay. How do I do this and what do I need to do this? You have to sit down and do the math because there's no other way to do it. You, you're going to need big injectors and lots of pumps because you've got to spray a lot of fuel in there. Um, and that's the only downside really. Other than that, I, I personally, besides maybe the environment because ethanol has a very, very poor energy potential inside of it. It doesn't have a lot of energy. That's why you have to spray 30% more. That's kind of another downside, I guess. Because if you took a gallon of gasoline and a gallon of E85, you could go, go a lot further on a gallon of uh, gasoline than you could on a gallon of E85. There's a lot more potential energy in a gallon of gasoline versus a gallon of E85. But the octane rating obviously is higher in E85 over gasoline. So, you know, there's pros and cons to all this and you have to figure that out and weigh that for yourself. But this car I decided to put on E85 and the part of the reason I, I did that was because Number one, the price. I didn't want to go buy race gas and spend nine to, you know, maybe even if I got the best deal, I'm going to spend eight dollars a gallon. To me, that's kind of ridiculous. I don't want to spend eight dollars a gallon to drive this thing. Every time I drive it and there goes a gallon, I'm like, man, there's eight dollars. I drive a tank out of this thing, dude. Ten gallons is usually what I drive about in a night. I would say seven to ten gallons. Well, I should say in a weekend. I drive seven to fifteen gallons out of the car on a weekend, having fun, screwing around, uh, messing around. So. You know what I mean? That could be 80 bucks right there at 10 gallons, if not more. So, I mean, that gets expensive and that's just for two days of driving. Like, or I could go 85 and I spend $1.80, $1.90 a gallon and uh, I don't feel so bad about it. You know, I go, every time I fill up this car, I fill it up and get about 13, 14 gallons in it and I take two 10 or two five gallon jugs with me and fill them up at the same time. So I usually get around 24, yeah, about 24 gallons is, is on average what I take with me. And that'll last me, um, more, definitely more than a weekend. That'll last me about two weekends. It, it theoretically would last me about a week. So it's not too bad. Uh, obviously depending on how you drive the car, but back to the E85. 
this is a fuel and, and something that a lot of people have, I guess, a real hard time understanding. There's lots of good things about it. I mean, number one, it it has a great, great, great octane rating. I mean, that's that's just number one. That's hard to beat. Number two is it definitely prevents a lot of engine failures. I've seen a lot of cars tuned on E85 and they've been on E85 their whole entire life. I've seen these engines personally torn them down, torn a couple of them down after quite a, quite a bit of beating on them and, and a couple of them have been daily driven cars. And the beauty of it is when you take a car apart that's been running on E85, the insides of the engine look super clean. They absolutely look gorgeous. It's, it's really cool. Whereas, you know, you take a gasoline engine, there's tons of carbon buildup, especially on the new cars that are direct injected that don't even have the fuel to spray on the back of the valve, of the intake valve. They just get so sooted up with carbon, it's unbelievable. It's literally disgusting. I'm surprised there's not more engine problems with that. But anyways, that's... That's getting off topic a little bit, but that, that's a big thing that, you know, E prevents and keeps clean. Even on direct injected cars, there's a lot less carbon that's going to be caked on the, the intake and exhaust valve. So number three is probably, I would have to say, the smell. <laughs> this is kind of a personal thing, but it, it, it is a thing for me. I really, truly like the smell of it. I like it a lot more than gasoline. Uh, it's a lot easier on the body and the skin, in my personal opinion. Um, and you know, it's cleaner and just easier to transport, I think. So, uh, there's, there's lots of little things about it. Uh, you know, you start your car up in the garage, you don't feel like you're going to die, you know, instantly when you start your car up in the garage and if the garage door, you know, was cracked and, and doesn't smell all stinky, which can be a good thing, can be a bad thing. Cause you know, you obviously don't want to start your car and sit in your garage with your car started cause you'd probably pass out from, you know, carbon monoxide poisoning, but don't do that guys, don't do that. Having a vehicle that runs on E85 is a little bit different too. I'll say one of the cons to having a car on E85 is uh, it's harder to find fuel. Definitely if you, some people can't even find fuel for it. So that's a definite con. Another is uh, fuel efficiency like we kind of talked about earlier. Um, fuel efficiency is a big thing. To some people it's huge, you know? And if that's the case, you should probably look into doing something like, you know, getting a E tune for like a race tune, higher boost tune, and then having a 91 tune for a, you know, lower boost or, you know, just your daily driver tune. So um, you get the better gas mileage and all that. Another con I think would be having to, you know, for us car guys that like to model cars and play with our cards is another con would be having to buy all the stuff to go to E85. Like this car, I couldn't just, you know, put E in it and away we went. I had to buy fuel pumps for the car and injectors. And for the most part, I'm pretty lucky that I only had to buy those two things. A lot of people have to buy like fuel rails, aftermarket fuel rails, and then they gotta go to a whole return style fuel system and buy, you know, regulator, lines, hose fittings, all that. And that stuff can add up really, really quickly. So, you know, that's something to take into consideration if you're thinking about going to E85. Get a beautiful wallpaper. Look at that, that makes a beautiful wallpaper. You guys want, just, you know, go ahead, take a screenshot right there. You have yourself the best wallpaper on planet Earth. Alright guys, get out of here.